Hey, on this episode of Wheelhouse, we went to New York City and we're watching some freaking Formula E. Hell yeah! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Am I getting a new episode? Maybe, if you sign a release. Formula E might be one of the most polarizing motorsports on the planet, but my mission today is to get you stoked on it. The ABB FIA Formula E Championship is an open wheel racing series. 11 teams field two cars each for a total field of 22 drivers, which includes some former Formula One drivers. They race around short circuits and the first driver to cross the finish line after 45 minutes plus one lap wins. I love Formula E and frankly, want more people to watch it with. Here are five reasons you should be watching Formula E. Reason number one to watch Formula E, these things are electric. That's right, they run on lightning. Uh, lightning! Lightning, lightning, lightning. Look at me, I'm James, ah! All cars have a baseline power of 200 kilowatts, which is about 270 horsepower, but they're good for a 2.8 second zero to 60 and a top speed of 174 miles an hour. That's pretty sick. All right, so one thing that I uh, really love about any sort of racing is the sound. And Formula E is definitely different. It's not like a roaring engine, because they don't have engines, they have electric motors. But I'm actually pretty impressed with how loud they are going around. They're not like ear splittingly loud where you need earmuffs. but they have a very unique noise. They kind of sound like the Covenant from Halo Drive. That's a reference, Halo 3 is the best one. I don't want to hear about Halo Reach. The cars have a limited battery capacity and the drivers have to manage it to finish the race. There's no swapping batteries in the middle of the race, which they kind of actually used to do. They used to pit and then jump into a second identical car halfway through. They don't do that anymore. The teams have to closely watch their car's energy levels so they won't run out of juice before the end. One example of energy mismanagement happened in February at the Mexico City e Prix. An early red flag for a crash extended the race by one lap and the Nissan team miscalculated how many electrons they had left in their figurative electricity tanks. The Nissan drivers who were running in third and fourth place ran out of juice at the beginning of the last lap and they ended up in 20th and 21st. A very disappointing finish because of a relatively simple mistake. The second reason to watch Formula E, it's a straight up video game. Drivers can get an extra boost of power during the race. It can happen in two ways. The first way is called attack mode, which is an extra 25 kilowatts that's picked up by driving through an activation zone on the track. 25 kilowatts is like 30 extra horsepower. You know in uh, Crash Team Racing, the little boost areas before jumps, it's kind of like that. The activation zone is off of the racing line, so the driver has to give up a little bit of lap time and maybe even a position to collect the power boost, but the boost itself could make up for it later in the race. They don't have to use the power boost right there, they can save it and use it later. Every driver has to activate attack mode a set number of times at each race. How many activations they are and how long the boost lasts is different at every track, and the officials don't announce them until one hour before the race starts. And that gives teams a very limited amount of time to strategize how they're going to use that to their advantage. The second way to get a power bump, and it's a big point of contention among Formula E fans, is called fan boost. Fans vote for their favorite drivers online during the six days before a race and up to five minutes after the race has started. So the drivers won't even know if they'll get that power boost until they're already in the heat of battle. The five racers with the most votes get 40 to 50 kilowatts more power to use just for five seconds during the second half of the race. That's like 50 to 65 more horsepower. That's a lot. Formula E is the only racing series that has anything like this. Spectators can tell when the drivers are using one of the power boosts by the color of the LEDs on the car's safety halo. When attack mode is engaged, it lights up blue, and when fan boost is engaged, they light up magenta. That way, the fans can see each driver's race strategy in action. Attack mode has been a crowd-pleasing addition to the series, but a lot of people think fan boost is an unfair popularity contest that dilutes the true spirit of racing. My honest opinion, I think it's kind of corny, but also kind of cool. Obviously, they want more fans to engage with the sport, and that totally makes sense. But imagine if the NBA lowered one team's hoop a few feet because more people voted for them. There's Stoffel Van Dorn, aka my bro. Just kidding, we haven't met. Fan boost is a new idea, so I'm willing to see how far it goes. If it doesn't work out in the long run, then we'll just scrap it for now. 
it's kind of cool. Reason numero tres to watch Formula E is that skill matters most. Formula E is one of the only big racing series left where the driver matters more than the car. Look, I love Formula One, but the best drivers can't win if they're not in the best car. I mean, sometimes they can, but only if the best cars crash out. In Formula E, the cars are almost exactly the same. The batteries are all the same, and there are price caps on the powertrain and chassis components to keep manufacturers from trying to outspend each other to build a faster car. Something cool about Formula E is that they let the fans walk onto the grid before the race. There's really no other racing series that I can think of that lets you do that. Pretty rad. It's very hot, by the way. I'm sweaty, just sweaty right now. <laughs> this mechanic's checking tire pressures right here. We can see the braking system. Honestly, the brakes are a lot smaller than I thought they'd be. Teams provide their own motors, inverters, and gearboxes and can tweak the suspension just a little, but they all run the same Michelin Pilot Sport all-season tires, even down to the same exact tire pressures. They've got tires that really resemble more what you'd see on your own car. They're very skinny, like I'm pretty sure the tires on my Mustang are about that wide. At the racing series, the slicks have very fat profiles. These cars handle more like your car would than, say, other high-profile open-wheel cars. This makes the racing incredibly close, and it means the power boosts I talked about before are that much more important. Formula E has a ton of passing, and that's even more impressive given the fact that all the races are run on narrow street courses. Reason number four, the tracks. So the crazy thing about Formula E is that all, all, all of their courses are on street courses, which is, I think, different from any other racing series in the world. So what we're gonna do is take a lap in a BMW i8 and see what one of these street courses is all about. The street courses are only one to two miles long and they're really, really narrow, which makes passing pretty hairy. Dude, thank you. Man. That was awesome. I think my phone fell back there. No, no, no. My phone is in here somewhere. I will try to find for you. No all right. My phone is in the safety car somewhere. We'll see. <laughs> These courses are so narrow, it's insane that they're gonna have like 20 plus cars on the track at the same time. There's a lot of action, bumping and drama, and the results are super unpredictable. There have been like 12 different winners in 15 races so far this season. It was insane. There aren't too many other racing series out there that can go a whole season without a clear winner right up until the end, and Formula E is one of them. The stakes are super high, and it keeps the suspense up at every single race. Uh, you know, it's pretty funny being in the, uh, the pit lane here, uh, being in these VIP areas that we've been so graciously afforded. A lot of side-to-side uh, -side cheek kissing, a lot of fancy people stuff going on. Definitely don't feel like I belong here because, uh, you know, I'm just a small town boy in the big city. I think what's so cool to me is like how many people are here. I didn't know that there's such a strong fan base for Formula E. So, oh, no. This one, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's inappropriate to say about the Michelin man. Anyway, as I was, as I was saying, man, like it's just, it's so cool to see so many different kinds of people out here supporting this sport. You know, I can't imagine that it's easy to be a uh, a new motorsport, any kind of sport. What if they made up a new kind of football? They brought it here. Where the hell is Alex? There he is. There he is. There's Alex. It's so exciting to, to imagine where the sport will go from here. And I'm really excited. Reason number five to watch Formula E, it's a weird one and it also involves gaming. Formula E recently launched the Formula E Live Ghost Racing mobile game. You can download it on your phone and drive in actual races against the actual drivers. The game takes data from the races and uses it to recreate how things actually went down. To my knowledge, nothing like this has ever been done before. It's still a work in progress and they're developing PC and VR versions for the near future. I've heard mixed reviews about the quality of the game, but I think it's a really interesting idea. I mean, we all know that driving sims are a realistic way to gain real racing skills without a real car, because, you know, like Gran Turismo Academy has proved that. Formula E is definitely pushing the development of electric cars forward, but with the sim stuff, they might be developing drivers too. And the racing is honestly super exciting. They sound so cool. It's so awesome. A single car by itself, but like all of them at the same time, 
You guys gotta come to this. You gotta, you gotta hear it for yourself. It's really cool. Formula E, put me in a car. I'll do good. I'll lose some weight. That might be an issue. Hit the treadmill. It's one of the coolest racing experiences I've ever been to, and I think there's a ton of potential in the sport. I can't wait to see how big this thing can grow. Plain and simple, it's just really cool. Not only am I a believer in Formula E, but I'm also a believer that New York pizza is better. We rented some bikes, and we're gonna ride down to the World Trade Center. What happened, you got lost? Yeah, oh yeah, Alex here. Cross traffic in front of like 15 cars. I took a, took a right and then I totally lost him. The second was a little scared. I thought I was gonna be, I I was gonna be lost in New York, like Kevin McAllister and Home Alone 2. 